Hi, today I'm going to be showing you how to fold paper quilt pieces. Here we can see three completed paper quilt pieces. Um, and if we take a closer look at one, uh, we can see that each completed paper quilt piece is actually four interlocking pieces. This uh, sort of sunshine shaped uh, outer piece uh, this interior green, sort of light green piece, which is actually the same folding as uh, the outer piece, just on a different scale. We then have this little tiny uh, light green piece in there, which holds the uh, sort of center, sort of interest piece, which is uh, the most difficult to fold, I might add. Now with the paper quilt pieces, there's really a lot of sort of variation especially in the interior pieces uh, that you can play with as you get more comfortable with sort of the folding um, uh, down the road. Two books that I would highly recommend, particularly if you're interested in modular origami and that served as uh, sort of the inspiration for the paper quilt pieces, Kusudamia Origami and Origami Inspirations. Both of these books are awesome. They're beautiful. There's some gorgeous, gorgeous modular pieces in both of these. Now, we're going to be working from the inside out. So we're going to start with the folds for this piece and this piece. Now, to get a piece this size, uh, a paper quilt piece about this size, which is a little bit larger than, than my palm, I start with a 15 by 15 centimeter uh, piece of origami paper. I do like to use two-toned paper, especially for the outer piece. Now, this interior piece, however, is that now remember it's the same fold uh, as this outside piece, except in order to get it to fit inside of there, uh, you want to fold a piece that is uh, seven and a half by seven and a half centimeters. Let's start. This is a tool that I use a lot. It is a free bamboo knitting needle, um, and that you can get them at Michael's, usually in packs of like six or 12 or something in there. Super useful, especially when folding things that can get a little bit small. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to fold the ends together to get uh, perpendicular lines running through the center of the paper. So then we're going to fold the end up to the center uh, for each side. So now you have these 16 squares. Um, also, note that this interior set of four squares, that's how large uh, the finished sort of outer shell of the paper quilt piece is going to be. And we fold diagonally. Almost done. Now we're going to flip and we're going to fold each point into the center.
Now we're going to flip over, and if you press on the four corners in the center, you can see that it sort of starts to take on sort of a different shape. You're going to fold each of these points into the center. And then you're going to fold each of these flaps down. So here, you see the back is a flat square, and the front is sort of four expanded smaller squares. Now we want to shore up these pieces. Now, if you look carefully, at each of these four sort of panels that are sticking out, you see that there is a crease running right down the middle of all of them. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold uh, this edge out to meet that crease, and you're going to do that on both sides. And we're going to then do that for all four. It looks like this. Now, you want to open each of these triangles up and squash it down. So here we go. We're going to open this one. Pull it to the top. We're going to press down so that this crease, this line here, lines up with the center. And then you're going to do that for all of them, so you open it up, and then you press down, sure up the creases, and you do that for all of them. Now, I was folding quickly, and uh, this is sort of, a lot of times with the, the double-sided origami paper, things can be a little bit Thin. So you might notice something like here. Here we'll see. Yeah, sorry. There's a little white showing. The good news is pretty much all the only thing that's going to be visible for this, anything in this interior was going to be this interior square, it's not going to play. So if you make a little mistake or if um, maybe your folding wasn't 100 percent accurate, like in this instance, um, it's not the end of the world. You don't have to like redo the piece or anything. These, you know, you're not really going to see all of them. Okay. So here is our completed outer shell. This was folded on a 15 by 15 centimeter piece. So now you want to fold another one of these, but you want to fold it um, sort of in the size of uh, seven and a half by seven and a half centimeters, which is uh, generally one fourth of the sheet um, of a standard piece of origami paper. If you're using, uh, if you're doing a sort of a larger quilt piece, 
what you want is something uh, that is a fourth of the size of the paper that you started with for the next interior piece. So if we go back and we look at uh, this piece, uh, we now know how to fold this piece and this piece. Usually for this interior sun sort of sunshine piece, um, I use one instead of a, a single instead of a two-toned color. Now I'm going to show you how to fold this little guy, this little guy in here. Now, if you were folding the little guy so that it actually um, would fit in a paper quilt piece that is going to end up being this size, the size of the paper that you want to use is approximately five centimeters by five centimeters. Now, for a tighter fit, you can do uh, 5.1 centimeters by 5.1 centimeters. This is a good time to tell you to invest in a paper cutter with uh, small increments if you're interested in doing this kind of work. Um, so I'm going to be using a 15 by 15 centimeter piece uh, to show you how to do the folds. But remember, when you fold it, you want to be uh, folding a piece of paper that is 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters. So this piece is actually very similar to the one we just did. Again, we're going to start by making, folding the ends together. And then folding in to the center from each side. Now, the biggest difference between uh, this piece and the one that we just did is, if you recall, the one that we just did, the next step after this was to fold these interior uh, diagonals. We're not going to do that for this piece. So then you flip it over and you fold into the center. Again, it can be useful. Uh, when it's difficult to see the creases, to not only try and line it up along here, but to also look at this line and make sure it lines up with this extension of the crease. It's good that we start with this um, sort of these easy pieces because the in the interior piece, if you're going if you're interested in making sort of the lavender flower is what I call the four petal. Uh, being able to follow your own creases is very important. Okay. I flip back over and then you can see this little square here and there's one here, 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 and here. For each of these we're just going to fold the tip into the other side. Now, like before, you let all these corners, you're going to push these corners up, you're going to push these triangles here inward. Okay. 
Shrub creases. So, this is the mega version of what this tiny little piece in there actually looks like. Okay, you're doing great. Now, the next piece. Final piece. This is the sort of lilac, the four petal embellishment that you can use in the paper quilt pieces. To get a piece that's this size, uh, that will fit in a uh, quilt where the large, a quilt piece where the largest piece was 15 by 15, followed by the interior piece which was 7.5 centimeters by 7.5 centimeters, followed by an interior piece here that was uh, between 5 and 5.1 centimeters to 5.2. This piece fits very snugly into the little yellow light one, little, little light yellow one that came before it. So in order to make sure that they fit snugly, you don't want to fold this interior piece at 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters. You want to fold it at uh, 4.8 centimeters by 4.8 centimeters. Um, this is going to result in a piece, if you start with 4.8, that is this size. Now that's very, very small. And if I tried to show you the folds using a piece that was only 4.8 centimeters by 4.8 centimeters, um, you would not be able to see me fold it. So again, I will be folding that interior piece with uh, a piece that is actually 15 by 15 centimeters so that you can see uh, all the folds that you need to. Now there's a lot of pre-creasing for this, so just bear with me. Start by folding it in half, both ways. And then again, we're going to flip it, and then we're going to fold each uh, edge into the center. I will tell you that the real difficulty of these pieces, and they're they're beautiful if you um, you know decide to fold them larger scale because sometimes the the smaller folding can be difficult. Um, but that's, you know, the real kind of challenge to making these pieces work is uh, folding at what is kind of a pretty ridiculously small scale. First set of pre folds. Now we're going to flip it over. We're going to fold each point into the middle. Now we're going to flip it over again. We're going to fold each point now into this corner.
For those of you who are real origami buffs, if you know the folds for the four sink base, that's what we're folding here. So you can jump ahead using your origami knowledge. Okay, there we go. it over. Now, here's where we're folding. We want to fold this line is going to bend up, this line is going to bend up, see it? And then when those, when those lines bend up, you bring it up to the point and you're left with this, you get a triangular point with this little guy. Up. Once you got him, fold that to the right, and then you're going to follow these lines here. You're going to push up this is standing up. You're then going to you're going to fold along this line, the interior here, so push that up. Now while you're pushing this part up, you're going to push that part down so that you get this shape. Got a little open cube, and got kind of all kinds of triangles, and saying that on the inside we have this, this going. So we're here. Now you're going to follow these two lines. You're going to pick it up. While you're folding this one down, you're going to push from the bottom so that you get something that kind of looks like this. Now at this point, you're going to want to take a little tool and reach up under this triangle. You're going to hold it, everything down. You're going to push this triangle and this square up. Hold it down. So you got this. This is the hardest part of the whole thing. Push this up. And then you push this this part that's kind of sticking up is going to come down. And you're going to collapse that edge. So you're left here with what appears to be a square missing a triangular piece at its uh, bottom right corner. And then in the back you have this nice square forming, also missing a little piece there. You're going to work along this line. You're going to pull this top part piece as well as this little sort of wedge here and pull that down so that you're left with four individual squares and then here's the back but we're not done yet if you look at this from the top you can see that if i if i pull this piece out there's this sort of wedge what you're going to do is you're going to fold that crease in and fold that back up for each corner. There's the wedge. Fold it in. There's the wedge. Fold it in. There's the wedge. Fold it in. Flatten everything back out. Now we're looking here. We're going to fold this square down. Then we're going to fold this square down into this guy. It's two triangles here. You're going to take this edge and you're going to kind of force those two together. And you're going to flatten the top. 
I'm gonna take this. Yeah, hold it over. And then, oh, it's the same thing that we just did. We're gonna force these two middle of the triangles together. Press down, flatten. Now you're gonna do the opposite of what you do. You move this, just pull this one down first. Pull this guy down. It's that same shape. Fold it up and together. Push it along. And then last one. Pull it down. Push together. Push flat. Oh, and here we have <laughs> the four pink face called because each of these is sunken in. Okay. Now, woo! Getting there. Okay. Now, the next phase is you're going to fold each of these corners in to the center. Like so. Now you're going to fold um, each of the triangles that you just made here. You're going to fold their point back out to the middle. Like so. I know what you're thinking, that doesn't look so bad. It actually strikes me how not difficult this is when you're working with such a large piece of tape. However, if the paper was like an eighth, not even an eighth, like a third of this size, it's a little bit more difficult. Okay, so here we are. Fold everything. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take each of these little triangles and pull everything up so that it's kind of standing up. Now, don't be afraid of the squash fold that's about to happen. You are going to get in here, I'm going to open up this little flap, I'm going to open up this little flap on this side, and then squeeze it. I'm going to pull it open and down. Pull it open and down until you get this nice, nice square. See? And you're going to re-crease that a bit, and you're going to fold that Let's do that again. So we got this one sticking up. We're going to open up each flap. Put it in there. Pull it open. Press down. Pull it open. Fold it back down the middle. Here again. Open it. Fold it open. Press 
करता हूँ Back down. Okay. So that's where we are now. Okay. Now you can see that there are four interior squares. What I would suggest doing is taking a tool like this and running it a little bit between the two diagonal points of each one to sort of give it an idea of where it's going to be folding. Can you see that interior square now? Now you're going to take this point, you're going to fold it into the center. We're going to do that with all of them. This can be useful, really, the tool is super useful here. Okay, number three. Okay, hold it. getting close now. All right, so now to open up the flower that has been formed, kind of want to hold it down a little bit so that everything kind of lines up symmetrically. You want to take your whatever tool you're using and you just kind of want to sneak in there and press down along the inside. And you can spend some time sort of tweaking it, making sure it kind of looks symmetrical and normal. And then you can kind of pull these out a little bit, give it a little bit less of a scrunch look. And that, that is a giant <laughs> interior piece. Now, in order to make it fit, remember, you have to fold it at pretty, pretty reduced. Again, if you wanted to fold this so that it would fit in the paper quilt that I've been describing, this piece of paper would have needed to be five, uh, 4.8 centimeters by 4.8 centimeters. So, say that we had folded all of our pieces. So here, I'll show you on this big one first. So, we have these two pieces. Those, of course, correlate to this light green piece and the dark green floral piece. These fit together like so. You stick each of these triangular pieces inside the little flaps here. Like so. I mean, I guess this 
It's pretty nice as is if you wanted to use it for panel cards or something. It's pretty nice. It's kind of nice, but it's big. So that's how those two pieces fit together. Now let's say that we had pieces that were actually to scale. I went and folded these earlier. So, let's see, looks like I dropped a piece. There we go. So, sorry about that. So already, you can see here, this is a slight modification uh, for the interior piece that I have recently uh, started using more frequently. Now, of course, both of these pieces are folded exactly the same way, and we did that earlier in the video. To get this piece without uh, these like secondary rays in here, all you do is you, once you get to this point where you're done, you just fold these under. So you fold them up and under as big as you can. So again, 15, 15 by 15, 7 and a half by 7 and a half. To get this piece to fit inside this piece, you pick up each of these. You can see there are four interior rays that are formed. So you pick up each ray and you put it inside sort of each interior sort of, um, I don't know, each sort of open space. Like so. that and kind of work to sort of line it all up. Now, I like folding uh, this second sun piece. I, I've decided that I like folding those secondary rays up into the piece so that you can see if you have a two-tone paper, you can still see some of the stuff. Next, it's easier if you go ahead and put the floral piece inside of your sort of the folding And then, for the interior piece, if this one had rays like the outer piece, you would do what you did. You would stick those rays into each of these open spaces. However, because the rays here have been removed, all you have to do is stick the corners of the blue piece up into the open spaces up underneath sort of the sun up into the sun there put everything down in there we have a finished paper quilt piece <laughs> they take some time now if you're worried about your paper quilt pieces sort of like sticking up and being a bit too 3d what you can do is there there are these little tiny glue dots called zots that you can get uh, from Michaels. And what I do is I just stick a zot on the back of each piece as it's going into the um, uh, as it's going into the paper quilt piece. So instead of being as CD as this, they're much more uh, they're much flatter and more manageable. All right, Whew, that was a long video. Thanks for watching. Um, good luck folding. Uh, feel free to visit uh, the Etsy store. I'll be linking the blog uh, to the Etsy store. So if there are other pieces that I get some interest in uh, from other people learning how to fold, I will post those videos to the blog and to the Etsy store. Uh, until then, happy folding and have a good, I don't know, <laughs> rest of your life. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.